thank you for joining this call for Medics for Clean Air. Really appreciate it. Maybe to get started, could I ask you maybe to introduce yourself and your background? Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Uh, yeah, I'm a clinical doctor. I'm a cardiologist. Uh, I've been specialized in critical care um, patients, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, I really uh, I have a lot of interest about how how environment is affecting uh, the cardiovascular diseases. That's why I'm here. Great, thank you for that. And maybe leading on to what you just said, could I ask you what interested you in the Medics for Clean Air campaign, or especially when uh, the call for champions was first put out? Yeah, you know, uh, as a healthcare uh, provider. Uh, I mean, the mission is uh, to treat patients and to offer uh, the best quality uh, of life. And, you know, uh, our health depends on, I would say, for categories or dimensions. Uh, one is the traditional risk factors, for example, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, our lifestyles, or, yeah, you know, uh, to take uh, our exercise uh, or so, some. Uh, clinical activities that we recommend. This is one of them. The second one is the genes. And right now we have, you know, uh, some treatments uh, and new targets, and we are really advancing and improving with that. But yeah, it's been a long time to, uh, you know, uh, deal with genes. But yeah, right now we have some kind of therapies. And at the same time, the, the, the third, I would say, uh, category or dimension is the health system. No, for example, uh, we get we get our vaccines or we get our treatments if we are have to go to the emergency room. But there, you know, there is a dimension, the fourth one, that it's really very important, and we have uh, we have not paying attention on that. And it's uh, the environment. How the environment is affecting uh, our uh, our health and our you know uh, quality of life. So that's why. I thought that Medics for Clean Air was really a, such a huge opportunity to, uh, you know, expand the knowledge uh, to our colleagues in order uh, to understand that there is really one dimension that there is a huge room to improve. So the environment is good. So it's risky. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm interested in that. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. and. I like how you've broken it down. The aspect of the environment and health system is often put kind of as at the back burner of the discussion. Um, but for you, what would be both the challenges and the opportunities for healthcare workers when talking about uh, healthcare decarbonization and sustainability of, uh, of the system? Regarding technologies, uh, we have to go uh, forward to to move or to step forward on that and think to change and you know there are right now in the present uh like uh eco-friendly technologies so that's time to you know to think about that and to try to change some technologies and trying to be in favor of these eco-friendly technologies so i would say this is one of the one of the challenges and at the same time, you know, we are producing a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, waste. So uh, yeah, it's time to think about how we can. Uh, it's there is a room for recycling to improve for uh, some kind of wasting that we are doing, or new things about uh, or new strategies in order to be less polluted with this uh, waste. And I would say, like the last point for that. Uh, regarding uh, these challenges is that, yeah, we're really very concerned about, uh, you know, uh, trying to deal with the carbon footprint as well. So this is, or I would say, one of the challenges that it's going to be uh, on our tables as well in the healthcare system for, for, for the next years, because, yeah, you know, waste, uh, carbon and also the, this technology so that's time how we can organize i mean it's going to take it's going to take a lot of effort because they are changes but they are really very completely necessary as i say at the beginning that, that the environment is closed so we have our ski so that's time for uh doing this approach but i'm curious now that 
you talked about a few uh, solutions such as technology, such as perhaps a mindset shift. Um, but in your experience, also as a as a researcher and as a clinical worker, what would be the first step to make this shift? Or what, in your experience, how how did you get here in your in your work that it is a topic that is being discussed? Yeah, thank you for this question. I would say that you know, uh, for being clear uh, or for starting for starting with is that uh, we need more education. You know. Uh, I think we have to start, uh, we have to go to universities, we have to uh, put inside the curricula, you know, uh, this subject, because there's not, uh, and in my concern, in my, or in my, you know, uh, environment, <laughs> no, there is no uh, room or uh, in order to share this knowledge or these problems early in the university. So I would say this is this could be the first step, you know, uh, like, you know, yeah, we are learning anatomy, we are learning about medications, but uh, we are learning about, you know, the risk factors. We're, yeah, of course we need, you know, uh, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, but what about, what about this huge knowledge? Because, you know, I mean, there is such evidence that the environment is affecting uh, our lives, is affecting our health. So uh, it's time to introduce these subjects, you know, early in the universities. But at the same time, it's time, you know, to promote, even in our colleagues, you know, because uh, if you, if you, I mean, not everyone is specialized in just uh, one problem, of course, but, you know, the environment is one of these four pillars that is affecting our health. So we have to, uh, share with our colleagues with some campaigns and explain that you know uh, the air pollution is related to myocardial infarctions you know the air pollution is related to asthma the air pollution is related to diabetes and you know we could speak for hours about how many diseases are related and not only with air pollution you know with the carbon with the climate change because if there are you know, at higher temperatures, people is going to get uh, sick for that. You know, that's time to share this knowledge. So if you uh, ask me uh, about how to resume this uh, or sum up this question is we need more education. So that's why in my hospital, we decided last year to create a commission that it's called, you know, uh, a health uh, like a, a environmental health commission. And we discuss with different with you know different purposes and we discuss about you know which strategies uh, we can do in, in the hospital in order to improve uh, these issues and for example we are thinking about you know just put some recommendations when the patient is going home about what how he they have to deal with air pollution for example so because they are in the guidelines in the society guidelines they recommend that you know if there is a day with such a huge uh, high, uh, air pollution, it's better not to go outside this day. You know, uh, so we are able to de to use these recommendations because they are in the guidelines. So that's one of the things that we are doing this commission. So just to sum up, we need education and you know to share this uh, knowledge. Yeah, that's fantastic. You really do great work in your in your hospital, and it's nice to hear that it's embedded in the in the guidelines so you can give that advice to the patients as well. Um, and perhaps as a summary last question, what would be your message or advice to healthcare professionals who are also interested in having an impact to to improve health systems to make sure that it has a better influence on on health and the environment. Yeah, that's a challenge question, but I would say that you know uh, we are like um, healthcare professionals. We are going every day to the hospital or to the out clinics, so uh, and we are treating patients and we are thinking, yeah, this uh, particular patient, you know, uh, he or she has uh, hyper hypercholesterolemia, so I can recommend it so, some diets. I can recommend you know some treatments. But uh, what about the environment? What I have to recommend to them? So uh, that's time for that. And you have hyper hypercholesterolemia. Of course, there is a part. Sometimes there is in there are in the genes, but sometimes you know the diet, of course, influence. So I mean, um, the patient 
has to change the lifestyle. Here, what it happens, what it happens is that it's uh, the environment is not under our control because this is like a social, um, you know, political issue. Because I didn't decide uh, to live in a big city where there is a lot of air pollution. You know, I didn't uh, decide to be in a place where some kind of food that I'm eating it's con it's polluted with metals. So, uh, you know, the decisions they don't also they don't come from uh, I would say from doctors. They can recommend, you know, and to be more to make uh, the patients aware that uh, the environment is affecting them. So uh, our mission here is to, uh, once again, to share knowledge, to give recommendations. Yeah, for example, you know, if you are saying to the patients that the pollution, the air pollution is, uh, is uh, I mean, uh, it's really affecting them because we know that the patients who have a lot of comorbidities, then the pollution is worse than someone that comparing to, to someone who is really healthy. So we can give them recommendations in order to avoid, you know, the pollution on, on that days. So, but at the end, but at the end, what we need is to reduce the production of that. So if the healthcare system goes to get, go together with patients, we have to go, you know, to the social and the, to the politicians and say to them that, you know, here there is a lot of evidence and in order to improve our healthcare system, we really have to apply for measures that we know. You know we know some measures that they really going to improve our health. It's not just about treatments and medical treatments. It's not just about treating the traditional risk factors. It's about, you know, to treat uh, these issues that we've been talking about, like, uh, you know, air pollution or metals, that they really have an impact in our healthcare system, in our health, and at the end, in our economy as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a, a multi-layer discussion to have um, across various systems at the end of the day. Um, so thank you so much, Jordi, for taking the time to speak to us today. I really appreciate your, your perspective on the, this very important topic. Um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you for your work. It's I mean uh, medics for for, uh, for clean air. It's really very important in order, you know, to expand this knowledge because uh, mm -hmm. you know all of us uh, are going to wait on that. So thank you for that. Absolutely, thank you.